a lot of people are what I call jet lagged at home. The, the clocks of their cells are out of sync and this causes many problems. And I'll, I'll mention the problems first. These include digestive issues, uh, mental focus issues, depression, anxiety, exacerbation of every major psychiatric disorder from OCD to ADHD to Alzheimer's, which is a neurologic disorder, of course, um, sometimes classified as one or the other, but you get the idea. So you need to coordinate the cells and systems of the body. How does that happen? Well, um, the primary way that happens is through the arrival of light to the eyes at the appropriate times of day and the absence of light at other times. So I'll give the practice and the tools first, and then I'll flesh it out with some science so that we don't go too far down the rabbit hole of circadian neurobiology. So the, the, the foundational practice that I truly believe every person should do, ideally every day, but if not every day, most days, is to view bright light, ideally sunlight, within 30 minutes to an hour of waking, and ideally it would be even sooner. Now, this is not practical for many people. You live in certain areas of the world where there isn't a lot of sunlight, and we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but the idea is to get up in the morning and within about 30 minutes to get outside and get sunlight into your eyes. It is fine to, uh, to wear corrective lenses like um, contacts or corrective eye, eye lenses. In fact, because of those, they, uh, what they do, those actually focus light to the retina precisely. That's the role of those lenses so that the light actually lands not in front of or back of the neural retina, but on the neural retina. Um, but Sunglasses would be problematic, so provided you can safely do it, um, you get outside and you want to view sunlight. Um, do you need to be in direct sunlight? No. Do you need to stare at the sun? No. Please don't stare directly at the sun. I always say never look at any light, artificial or sunlight, that's so bright that it's painful to look at. You have a blink reflex for a reason. But how much and how long to do that? Well, it's going to vary because of time of year, people have different sensitivities to light, but in general, getting outside for about five to 10 minutes every morning is extremely important. If there's cloud cover, it's still important. And it's far better than getting light from artificial sources like the ones behind me. Even though artificial lights can seem very bright early in the day, they really don't carry the light intensities that are required to do the following things. When you look at sunlight, especially early in the day, there's a special class of neurons, nerve cells in the back of the eye called intrinsically photosensitive cells. These were discovered by David Burson at Brown University and others, these cells connect to your hypothalamus. They literally send a wire, what we call an axon, to your hypothalamus, which resides over the roof of your mouth. And there resides what we call the master circadian clock. The master circadian clock also has a name, the suprachiasmatic nucleus, and the suprachiasmatic nucleus acts as a conductor for all the cells of your body, from your liver to your brain cells, every cell, and it starts sending out signals to coordinate those clocks. Think about a clock shop where all the clocks are out of sync, the suprachiasmatic nucleus sets them all to the same correct time so that they all chime at the appropriate time. Otherwise, it would be chaos. So light early in the day is the primary signal by which that clock setting mechanism occurs. Now, if it's very dark out, uh, you may have to rely on artificial lights. And I'll mention some low cost options. Um, if you wake up before the sun comes out, Turn on as many bright artificial lights as you can, but then once the sun is out, then go outside. People ask, can and should you do this through a window or a car windshield? And the answer is no, because of the filtration of particular wavelengths of light by windows and windshields, it will take about 50 times longer. You'll be spending all day waiting for this clock mechanism to kick on. A couple other things about positive things that happen when you do this practice. First of all, every 24 hours, your body will release a hormone called cortisol. We often hear about cortisol as a stress hormone and that it's terrible for us, but cortisol, as you know, is vital to life. And it actually provides a lot of the alertness and focus that is wonderful for so many things. That pulse, as we call it, that increase in cortisol is going to happen at least once every 24 hours, regardless of when you view light. But by viewing light early in the day, that pulse arrives early in the day and gives you energy and focus for a you know, 10 to 12, maybe even 14 hour period. If you do not view light early in the day for a couple days in a row, what happens is that cortisol pulse starts to drift later and later into the afternoon. And a late shifted cortisol peak, I should call it peak or pulse, is 
closely associated with many forms of chronic depression. People's mood starts to get worse. They start having evening anxiety. They start having trouble sleeping. So get as much bright light in your eyes as you can early in the day as is safely possible. If it's a really bright day or you're on a snow field, it would probably only take a, a minute or two to set this clock. If, for instance, it's a, today actually it's pretty overcast. It's looking pretty UK here right now. <laughs> um, I spent some time over there. And, it's, you know, I'll get outside and, and view light. Um, maybe I'll spend 30 minutes there. Maybe I'll take my work outside. It's raining a bit, so it's, it's tough, but you, you try and do it most days. If you miss a day, no big deal. But the next day, you should try and get twice as much time outside. Now, why? Why would that be? It turns out that this clock mechanism is a what we call a slow integrator. It's actually counting photons over time, light energy. So this part of our visual system is very different than the visual system components that we use to see edges and faces and recognize motion, et cetera. It is a clock setting mechanism for our entire brain and body. So get that morning and early light. If you don't have access to sunlight for whatever reason, I know there are a lot of daytime simulators that are for sale out there, so-called SAD lamps, um, uh, seasonal affective disorder lamps. They're quite expensive. I wanna be very clear, I have no financial relationship to any of these um, companies, but one low cost alternative is to get a ring light of the sort that the Instagram or YouTube uh, YouTubers use to make themselves look good. It's like a blue ring light. It's very, you can find them very low cost and you just put that at your breakfast table or while you work in the morning. That is bright and will get the system going. And um, some people like that on all day. And that brings me to another point, which is that there's a lot of interest nowadays in blue blockers, and we've heard so much about how blue light is so terrible for us, but nothing could be further from the truth. Blue wavelengths of light are one of the main wavelengths that sets the circadian clock. In other words, don't wear blue blockers in the morning and throughout the day. You're actually short-circuiting this wake, wakefulness signal and clock setting signal. If you're going to wear blue blockers or um, try and truncate the amount of light coming into the eye for sake of better sleep, et cetera. Try to do that late in the day. And I'll get to late in the day in a moment. So hopefully that covers the, the main bullet points and the questions that I usually get asked about this. It's a zero cost practice yeah. to get outside. Um, you can, yes, you can bring your phone. I suggest bringing your children or your dog or your, um, uh, you know, or just yourself and getting outside, take your coffee outside. Even on a day where it seems kind of overcast, you're getting far more photon energy than you would from bright indoor lights. Yeah. So that's the main thing. And many people report feeling much better immediately. But in addition to that, as you do this more and more, you'll start to recognize the physiological response. It's not a placebo response. They, there are two things that happen. That, that cortisol pulse starts to get entrained, as we call it, synchronized to this behavior and to this light viewing. And the other thing that happens is that when you do this morning light viewing, it sets about a 16 hour countdown to the release of another hormone called melatonin, which is released from the pineal gland and is the hormone that's responsible for transitioning us into sleep, not keeping us asleep, but transitioning us into sleep. So it actually helps establish a better um, transition and quality of sleep later that night. Many people who have sleep issues find that just this simple morning light viewing practice assist their sleep issues tremendously. Yeah. So th that's the, the primary layer, and this is all mediated by vision. Um, there are other things one could do, for instance, uh, if you want to you know, uh, kind of synergize with this practice, which would be if you're an exerciser, you could try and do your exercise outside without sunglasses. There are a number of other practices you can layer in, but in terms of the visual system, that's the main one. The other one, I would say a close second, is to absolutely dim the lights in the evening and late hours. The hormone melatonin, as I mentioned before, is powerfully inhibited by light. When you view light, even if you go into the bathroom in the middle of the night and you turn on really bright lights, that quashes the levels of melatonin that are released from the pineal. And many people get a little paranoid about light when they hear that. I wouldn't worry about it. I would just dim lights as dim as you need in order to safely move about your evening activities. And basically the time to avoid light would be between about, about 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. Shift workers are a, total, a separate conversation. I, I have a, an episode of my podcast completely devoted to shift work and involves some technical details to figure out how to adjust these behaviors for them so they could check out that episode. But, but let's think about typical uh, night 
you know, diurnal people, as we call it, sleep at night and awake during the day. So avoid bright lights in the evening. Now, you, earlier I said the lights that are be, the artificial lights are not bright enough to set the circadian clock, so you need sunlight. So why can't you view Netflix or your screen or bright lights at home between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m.? Well, turns out that the sensitivity of the cells in your retina changes such that it doesn't take much light in the evening uh, or later, you know, 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. to throw off your whole clock schedule and system. So in the evening is when you want to dim the lights. And ideally, you would also have the lights low in your physical environment. The cells that transmit this information to the hypothalamus reside in the lower half of the retina. And because of the optics of the eye, they view the upper visual field. So table lamps, um, uh, lights down near the floor, fire, firelight or candlelight is fine. Moonlight is fine. If they, believe it or not, even though a very bright moon actually doesn't carry that much uh, yeah. photon energy. So avoid bright lights in the, between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. As a last point, if you somehow have to run to the store or to the hospital or you turn on the lights in the middle, then I don't freak out. Remember, these are slow integrating systems. It's just that if you're consistently looking at screens late at night or you're consistently turning on bright lights in the middle of the night, you're really messing up your system. So these are averages. It's a lot like nutrition or exercise. Try and get it right or mostly right about 80% of the time. And don't, um, don't panic if you happen to uh, violate the, these tools uh, every once in a while. You'll be just fine. Yeah, I love that. Very, very thorough, very, very comprehensive. Uh, I just want to echo, Andrew, in my own clinical experience, I have seen natural light exposure, just like you, be game-changing for people. Um, I, I first wrote about it, I think about five years ago in my first book, and I still get messages today from people taking photos of themselves outside having their morning cup of tea or coffee in the garden. I think that's really, really important. And I also love, you know, the way you talk about the visual system and the cells in the back of the retina. It, it, for, for me, it sort of feels like light coming through the eyes first thing in the morning is it's kind of like the conductor of this beautiful orchestra that can be played by different organs and cells within your body. Is, is, that, is that sort of fair to say? Absolutely. And um, yeah, I think, you know, as a clinician, you, you'll probably recognize this phenomenon, um, ICU psychosis, when people don't get regular sunlight because yeah. they're in the yeah. hospital. Remember, hospitals are some of the most unhealthy places to be. Sorry, um, my clinical friends, but, you know, you look at the food in hospitals, it's dreadful. You look at the lighting conditions and they violate everything that I just said. And there's a phenomenon well known called ICU psychosis, where people uh, literally develop psychosis in the hospital because of the uh, chaotic lighting schedules, they leave and they feel better. Yeah. And I'm mentioning this because there are two studies um, from University of Colorado showing that when people get on to these schedules of morning light viewing and avoiding uh, artificial lights at night to some extent, their melatonin and uh, cortisol rhythms correct within two days. And so that's, I just, you know, put that in there as a kind of an encouragement that it, it works very quickly and nobody escapes this mechanism. There is no one, you know, you could say nutrition, we could argue about plant-based, carnivore, omnivore. I mean, you know, the discussion is such a yeah. hairball topic that I, you know, uh, I've made the mistake of touching that third rail before, <laughs> um, you know, but, uh, but when it comes to light viewing, nobody escapes this. In fact, even blind people, provided they still have eyes, have this mechanism. And I actually, because my lab works on visual repair, in addition to a number of other things, I consult a lot of people who are blind and they have vastly improve their sleep. A major issue for blind people is sleep um, and other aspects of well-being through this mechanism. Now, you said uh, the conductor of the orchestra, and that's absolutely right. It, it is fair to say that this is the most important mechanism by which we coordinate the activities of all the cells of our body. If you enjoyed that clip from my podcast, here's another powerful clip that is really going to help you with your health and happiness. I'm on a mission to get every human being to add one thing to their morning routine. This takes five days to work before you have an enormous breakthrough in how you see and relate to yourself.